Today, we're going to talk about overloading and overriding. Now, overloading and overriding are two totally different things, but they sound so similar that if you're in an interview and you're already flustered, you might give the correct definition for the wrong term. So I'm going to give you a trick that I use personally. So when I'm asked this question, I never confuse the two concepts again. So let's take a look at this class. Here's class overload me. This particular class has two constructors, both of which have the same method name, right? This one right here has one parameter. The overloaded method has a long list of parameters. So the way I remember this is when I think of overloading, I think of a constructor with a long list of parameters. Now, overriding is when you have an abstract or virtual method and you write your own implementation of that method in a derived class. So overriding is like revolution or redress. So, you know, during the American Revolution, the colonists didn't like King George's method of taxation. So the colonists overrode the king's method of taxation by dumping tea into Boston Harbor. So I want you to think of that anytime you think of overriding. You're overriding the king's method of taxation. You're implementing your own method since you don't like the king's method. Now, there's two kinds of methods that can be overridden. Abstract methods and virtual methods. Abstract methods absolutely have to be overridden. You must provide your own implementation. Virtual methods, eh, it varies. So take a look at this base class absolute. This is an abstract class with an abstract method right here. Now down here, I have an inherited class. I'm inheriting from base class absolute. See these squiggly lines? Inherited class does not implement inherited abstract member base class absolute. I absolutely have to create my own absolute override me method in this new inherited class. And once I actually create that, squiggly lines go away. Now with the virtual method, you can override it or you cannot override it. Totally up to you and how you want to handle this. So let me show you how this works. Here I have a base class and I have a virtual method that returns uh, use base class. Now I'm going to create two derived classes one of which is overridden, you know, has an over uh, has a method that's overridden, and the other doesn't. As you can see, inherited class overridden inherits from base class virtual. And I'm going to override the override me it varies with return t. So instead of returning use base class, I'm returning the word t. Down here, I'm inheriting from base class virtual as well using another class. And I don't have this overrided, overrode method down here, but I don't have any squiggly lines. Nobody's saying you must override this because it's virtual, it's optional. So with overloading, you're going to think of multiple methods that have the same name, and maybe one of those methods has a long set of parameters. With overriding, you're going to think about rebelling or revolting against the king's methods. Now you're probably gonna get asked a follow-up question about overriding, and they're gonna ask you the difference between the abstract and the virtual methods. Remember, the abstract method absolutely must be overridden. The virtual method, it varies. You can override it or you cannot override it. Totally up to you. Practice these definitions in the mirror or with a webcam, and good luck on your next interview.